I failed to talk about <clears throat> being abducted the 6th of the 6th, 16. It was all about chemtrails and martial law, things that I had nothing, had knew nothing about, things that my parts were sharing all around online and around churches about the fires coming, about martial law starting in Christchurch in Phoenix, Arizona, about the dams bursting and they're birthing out something, um, which was like their partake on the Bible. Bible. Um, I don't actually remember a lot, so Holy Spirit, I need you, I need help filling in the type things that I don't know because there's actually a lot that I don't know because it was my parts that were sharing it, um, as well as going around saying, and sharing about the spiral as well. I shared that heaps online too. Um, them using it. And then they used it on TV. <laughs> but it didn't work. Because God is more powerful. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. 6616. Six, well. So. I started waking up. 2014 with chemtrails it's like excuse me what the heck is that stuff that's spraying over me and my babies <sighs> like and inside it was a knowingness of they're poisoning me um and so I did a bit of research and I found that there were these conspiracy theorists that um talked about uh this chemical trail being left in the air and I've went to university and I found the books and it's um, weather manipulation via um, aerosol, forced aerosol spray, it's geoengineered manipulated weather via forced aerosol spray and cloud seeding and there are patents for it and this stuff is real and back then I don't think I knew God at the time but my logic, when I was going psychic, which I now know was the Holy Spirit, um, was just the real push to push, to push, to push, to stop the chemtrails. And we weren't seeing much here. But all of a sudden, like, um, oh, yeah, what happened? On a Friday afternoon, there was this dude online on Facebook, some chemtrail page that said he was a chemtrail pilot. And I ended up calling him a pedophile. And I said that you run with pedophiles and wolves. I said, so I'll label, label you one until you prove that you're not. Um, it was probably a bit, you know, wrong, whatever. Anyway, I called him out. It's truth. Um, the New World Order are a bunch of pedophiles. And the full agenda is to change it to be illegal to have sex with our kids so they can do martial law and take over. But anyway, that's the full agenda. Um, to get there, it's a long step. Steps. <laughs> While killing off the planet. Anyway, God is more stronger and it is finished. Um, we just need to pray to get to the finish line. And do a bit of work. So I was organising a chemtrail, like, um, march or, you know, sort of like, on Facebook, a group of people to sign I do not consent forms and drop them off to the local governments and send them to Parliament on that date. And I chose that date for a reason. Just because it was a ritual date, I didn't actually know it was the Queen's birthday in some places. And um, I just thought, yeah, one up to you. Because I must have known about that sort of stuff then. Um, I must have known about the full agenda by then. Which I already knew all the full agenda anyway, because I was programmed with it. But um, um, it's a different thing because I was fully amnesic to it, like amnesia, hard, like God had to wake me up, kicking and screaming practically. To break me out of the programming or to show me that I knew more than I knew. I don't know what he did. Anyway, he woke me up and saved me. Um, 
Oh yeah, because I was supposed to sacrifice my son, my firstborn son. It's all about the firstborn sons. Once again, we're in those years of sacrificing the children. Um, you can kill your child now, right up until nine months. Yep, <sighs> Hillary loves babies. Um. So yeah, on the six of the six sixteen. I had <coughs> organised to do that. <sighs> but I don't know how many people did it. Um, it was all so hard at that stage because there was so many people waking up that didn't believe and thought everybody was loopy that was already a believer of the governmental conspiracy against the people. Um... And it was really hard because not only that was I waking up just like everyone else, I then had to wake up to the fact that I was programmed for end times. I still haven't really woken up to that fact, even though I can talk about it easy as. Um, well, not easy as, it's dissociated, that's how I talk about it. Mm. Um, I woke up the next morning really late, um, and they did two, and they normally like really early rises, and um, I had this horrible weighty feeling in my body, just so like like I had been drugged. I know that feeling. But I don't know that feeling. And I had this sore back of my head and back of my body. And I had a cigarette, which was really, really odd. It was not like me. I don't do that. And, yeah, I just, this dream I had that felt like, well, that felt like a dream. I don't know if I should mention it. Yeah, tell the truth, tell the truth. Um, the dream. I was sitting on the back porch having the cigarette, right, touching the back of my scalp, saying, oh, that's how I saw, you know. Checking out the bruises on my arms, the handprints on my legs that were coming up. Remembering my dream of being dumped in the police boat. <sighs> and then... Being assaulted and electric shocked and woken up out of a stupor and told off and told that I can't stop martial law here no matter what I try. We can search and seize anywhere we want. Um, no matter where, what you try, you can't stop martial law here. And then... Um, I remember being, well, in this so-called dream, um, dropped back on the ground outside, and then um, put, or I don't know, yeah, I don't, I don't remember being put back into bed, but I'd say I got back there somehow. Um, so I went out the back while I was having this cigarette, remembering this dream, and. Uh, uh, there was a outside cane chair and that was um on its back. The cushions were laid out um pillow and then um another pillow on top at the head end and then there was a dead patch of grass around the shape. And I remember being really itchy, really sore in the back of my head, sore in my body, bruises, I've got photos. Um, and <sighs> later that day, as more and more come to light, I realised that it was not a dream. What happened to me was not a dream. 
what happened to me was what they do to many MK Ultra people when they reprogram them. I didn't know back then they knew which part to wake up, but I know that at some point that part has emailed my counsellor and told her um, that they were pissed off because they got woken up, they got told off for knocking about martial law and how that they couldn't stop that and then they put her back to sleep. That was so cross. And um, there was also a part that smoked for quite some time. And, oh yes, Holy Spirit reminded me about the money the money I didn't know I was reprogrammed pro like actual with new plans oh gosh am I going to go there okay Whew. yes because even I've even told people at church that I was supposed to be implementing new world order that were certain weekends and they were they would like yeah say oh that's good that you're here then instead so people know um anyway twenty thousand dollars um came into my bank account just before may the first last year no year before um so i never wanted to apply for the money um i felt that that was like really like pfft. Yeah, no, I'm not applying for that money. I feel like a whore applying for that money. Um, I don't want anything to do with that money for compensation. Anyway, next one, I'm flipping, applying for it. Like, normally, it takes people years in years to go through this process and get a lump sum payout. Whatever part of me applied for this and then went to the appointment, which had just happened to be May the 1st. No, it wasn't May the 1st. It was because I needed the money for May the 1st. April 19th, that's it. Beginning the first 40 days of sacrifice. There's 40 days of sacrifice coming up. Um, we're going to do a 40-day fast. Um, probably just, like, I, I couldn't do a Jesus fast. No way. I'd die. Um, probably just do a fruit fast. Be a vegetarian, fruitarian. Just eat fruit and veg for 40 days. Um, and uh, where was I? money uh yeah so this appointment happened and within a month i had twenty thousand dollars in my bank account from acc and i was shocked because i didn't want to apply for that i didn't as far as i i, I knew i applied um in the end because this form came back and i went to the appointment and um yeah i obviously did well I'd never talk about the um, MK or any of that cult stuff with um, ACC, as far as they know here. Um, it's not like that. And um, I got given $20,000 for being a good little girl. Like I'm not saying anything, obviously. And... Then I had an urge, well, no, I didn't have an urge, I had a thought, a part, obviously had the thought, pre-programmed thought, to buy guns. And I'm like, what, what, no way, I'm not doing that. And the Holy Spirit led me to buy um, an awesome car with a prophetic name and a cool number plate. And um, I got to go up and down the nation repenting and renouncing and breaking curses off the land. So that was pretty cool. And everywhere I got, went, I got Hawks, which was amazing. And as far as the 6 of the 6, 16, um, the fires then happened after that, um, where I was telling everybody. So um, 
2015, I was going around telling people lots and lots and lots of stuff and lots of stuff online, like releasing a lot of stuff for the plans of the New World Order, but I didn't know that that's what I was doing. Like, because I was amnesic to um, the fact that, that I actually knew in that stuff and that it was actually real. Yeah. It's hard to explain. Um... Anyway, I was also saying that Hillary would fake your death on the September the 13th or before the end of the year and come to New Zealand at some point for the end times ritual to bring forth the Antichrist. And that on the 22nd of the 2nd, um, they harped us to um, finish off their pentagram in the streets. That's quite possible and quite real. Um, because then they built their transitional cathedral and parts were telling other people about the trafficking going on under there and about the rituals and things in the tunnels. And, um, yeah. Um, snap out of it. Ah, tunnels. Anyway, uh, the tunnels are connected to Antarctica. Father God took me up in a vision into the sky and he showed me the pentagram where the demons were being released. Out of right of the centre of the city, up through the tunnels. And um, that's when Father God spoke and the angel that, I don't know, maybe, yeah, no, it was obviously God, said about the tunnels being connected to Antarctica. Yeah, and the ley lines and all that are what matches and that's the power they use. And then, poof, I was back in my body. Um... That experience was the most out there. I have had a couple. Well, I've had a lot. But, um, that was actually being taken out of my body, I think. I don't know how. Maybe, I don't know. Well, my spirit. Ah, ha, click. It was my spirit that was taken up out of my body and flew. Duh. Okay. It's not my body. Um, Yeah, so that was a very, very, very out of experience and then kind of scary to see the city like that and in darkness and chaos and demons. But um, something I did that I, that I was asked to do, that I did in obedience, even though I had nobody covering me or walking with me or anything like that at this point in time, um, because everybody just thought I was some crazy person. And they didn't really care. They didn't want to know. And they just told me to shut up and kind of practically go away, really. Um, um, I did it. And, uh, yeah, when the fires happened, um, which they started on the 13th and some demon in the city told me it was witchcraft and whatever, which I knew anyway because I'd been saying it for months. Um, stayed up all night and prayed and prayed and prayed for days, days and days and days um, until it stopped and the, the military was turned back and everything. And uh, at the time in Phoenix, Arizona was the storms and... Um, they wanted to burst the dams, and that was going to be the birthing era of all this crazy chaos and the Antichrist era and stuff like that. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, people's prayers and Almighty God stopped it. So, uh, yeah, can't stop martial law. <laughs> Suck on that, Satan. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> he is just nothing. I mean, he is really crushable under our feet. He's going to hate this. He hates me. His demons hate me. His reptilians hate me. They hate me. They want to destroy my life, but I'm just like a laugh in their face. But I can't really laugh in their face because you're giving someone deliverance. <laughs> um, and the principalities probably hate me too. And I know Hilarion throat punched me back in May when she came to my country. Q even posted a suicide watch. Some people don't think that was about in case they think it was about something else, but I believe he's been watching. And why? Yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, programming. Delta just came to my mind, so Holy Spirit, what do you want to know? Tell them. Delta Assassin Programming. Breaking Delta Programming. If an assassin comes at you, you need to break the programming at every brainwave level. So you say, Father God, I break the Delta brainwave programming at every brainwave level. Alpha, Beta, Delta, Gamma, Theta, Omega, Epsilon, Phi, Zeta, Rho, and any other brainwave level. There are prayers that will become available on this subject but if you want to write that down you can rewind it and that is if you have a Delta assassin coming at you of course you'd have to be highly in tune with the Holy Spirit and not about MK Ultra to know what to even do but yeah that's a prayer um, I wonder if it was a Delta that you know it would have been I've broken all my programming anyway and they'll hate that they'll be so pissed off um, that's the ultimate goal for anybody is to break the programming and integrate the parts because the parts are the open doors parts of the open doors for the demonic realm to get in and still have access to you so that's why it's better spiritually to have all the programming broken the demons the gods the goddesses and all that stuff renounced and broken off and the parts integrated because then Satan has no open door to access you or your parts and take you to rituals or get your spirit out. That part of you or whatever, however they do their crazy stuff to take to rituals. So we need to cut off all astrals and all that sort of stuff too as well as, yeah, there's a lot of deliverance and prayers that need to be done. It's not just one quick fix. I wish it was. And one day it will be. Well, I don't wish because that's what witches do. But I pray that it was just a one hit wonder. But the trauma is so severe and so intense that God gave us the mechanism to dissociate because otherwise we would just die. It's too much all at once. And there's plenty of times I wanted to die. And I had God. And people around you got no idea what's going on. They think, you know, I don't know what they think. Anyway. So anyway, um, people are programmed for end times. And to implement chaos and destruction on certain dates. Especially ritual dates. So there's a lot of things that have happened around the world that have been programmed into people and um, some people have done things that they were programmed to do and I'm sure there's been plenty that haven't and that's because the soul and the spirit are a lot stronger than the darkness and the demonic sometimes Sometimes the demonic one, yes. But I can swear on the Bible and the dictionary and a law book 
whatever I had to, that the spirit within can be a lot stronger than programming or the demonic. So we just need to pray to break people's programming. Just keep praying to break people's programming and asking to release angels around them. And we just ask you, God, to come and release angels over all the people listening and angels over all the MK Ultra people, all the children and that have been satanic, ritually abused, anybody that's been ritually abused or tormented ritually and religiously, anybody that has been traumatized, raped, trafficked, all of that stuff, God, we ask you to release your protecting angels around them, your healing angels around them, and your love. And please to reveal yourself to all of those people that are hurting, that are broken. We just ask you to love on all their parts that they have that are broken within themselves and to bring all their fractured pieces back to them. We thank you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. We ask you to pour your Holy Spirit out upon this earth. Cover all flesh. Bring all of your children back to you. Hallelujah. <laughs>